Hello friends and potentially a troll or two. This video is about an experimental sideways burning self-feeding wood stove made with scrap metal for the workshop. It's been running five years, let's see how she's doing. This is the heat exchanger. It's quite separate from the burn chamber which is lower down. And we can split this lower unit into a few different parts. It's got a primary combustion chamber, a secondary combustion chamber, and a magazine fuel feed area. Uh, alongside all of that we've got plenty of junk and rubbish. Now last time I turned it on the stove really didn't work well, it wasn't drawing properly, smoke was coming into the workshop, it was bad, so let's get up on the roof and investigate. While we're here I might as well talk a little bit about how the fan works here. So in the past it drew the hot air out and went through the fan, spun around and then shot out. That worked quite well but the fan blades kept on getting gunked up with creosote so what I did was spin the fan around have it so it was blowing air into the flue through this stainless steel pipe and that blows air from the outside just straight up the flue the idea being that the venturi effect would then pull the hot air from the stove out and up and away so right now we've got the fan going so we can see if there's any problems up here it all seems okay, that tyre there just attaches the box that houses the fan to the roof. The idea is that it separates the vibration of the fan to the roof so that doesn't go down making a noise inside. It's just bolted onto the roof there and siliconed onto the housing unit. That's uh, an old microwave case that's been sort of modified and repurposed. Same deal over this side. The, there's a bit of tyre and silicone with that angle bracket there. The bit of stone on top is just a vibration deadener, which just also just siliconed on. Uh, so wherever possible I've isolated it. It all looks a bit shoddy now, but I'm actually surprised at how well it's lasted over five years out in the weather here. Including the flu, it's all second-hand reclaimed stuff, so none of this was new to begin with, so it's alright. Right now I'm just checking to see the air is coming out as it should, the fan's blowing up, it all seems to check out. I can feel a good breeze and things seem to be blowing upwards when I let them go. So then, somewhere between this year burn unit and the chimney there, something's going wrong. I'm suspecting the heat exchanger but I haven't looked inside the burn unit since forever so let's check that out starting with a bit of an orientation of the workings here. This is the fuel magazine here, those sticks that just appeared. Basic idea is that it's sideways burning as they burn, they self-feed down. So you don't have to tend it so often. Gravity does the work for you, so to speak. That light blue line is where the primary air comes in for primary combustion. It comes in from outside and then that slightly darker blue line is the secondary combustion air. Again, that's piped in from outside. And the dotted line there is just the, the path of the exhaust gases. And they go right alongside the incoming air, so they preheat it. It's all really well insulated, so the idea is it's a super hot burn, which is most efficient. Because it's so insulated though we need a separate way to actually get the heat into the room otherwise it'd all be just going up the flue and outside. That's where this heat exchanger comes in so it's basically a cylinder inside a cylinder here's it in the process of being welded up. You'll get to look inside soon enough anyway but first let's clear up some of this stuff. Uh, I know from previous cleanings of the heat exchanger that sooty stuff just goes absolutely everywhere. Stuff, lots of random stuff. It's all quite interesting, so it takes me ages to clean it away. Finally, though, I think we're ready to have a look at the burn unit a bit closer. There's the two infeed pipes coming from outside, taking primary and secondary air into the burn unit. They give the outside air a smidgen of preheating, but that's all because the, that old unit is really well insulated. Hence the close stacking of the logs without fireballs of death. And there's another intake here. That's the intake that takes in the actual air from the shop. And then moving up, we come to the heat exchanger itself. 
the holes there let uh, outside air come to the inside of the exchanger so it effectively doubles the surface area and if what I'm saying is making no sense to you then check out the blog post I wrote on flowering elbow link in the description there are a couple of stove top thermometers, one on that hot plate and one on the exchanger. They're really useful for diagnosing what's going on in the burn. Let's get rolling with fixing this anyway. So I'm taking off the access panel for the heat exchanger. That's so loud. Battery powered impact wrench is pretty awesome, but it vibrates humongously over that sort of steel canister. It's really loud. It doesn't look awful, that's my initial impression. Trying to see in there and it doesn't actually look too bad. See between the skins. Let's have a look around the other side in the lower hatch. I'm certainly going to need to replace these heat resistant gaskets. So that looks a bit worse to me. For a bit of a closer look. Okay, so there's some loose or flaky bits there. Could probably do with a bit of cleaning down the bottom. So I'm using a bit of flexible conduit, electrical conduit y stuff stuffed so into the end of the weak. vacuum. Square. It kind of works, but it's a bit time consuming. So now we're, we're going to try using a bit of the old. The compressed air is pretty exciting because bits fly out all over the place and shower the workshop. The problem is I'm never quite sure what I've cleaned and how clean it is in there. Let's see what, if anything, has been blasted down into the burn unit. This is the window glass, which, as you can see, desperately needs cleaning. So I'll just show you how I do that. Dead simple, just using one of these little scrapers. It's easier than using newspaper. So when I feel like being able to see the fire, that's what I do. Oh. You can see what that is in another video. So I'll just show you how we open it up. Got a spring catch there. Another one there. These are quite good. They keep it under tension with these springs. found them to be really quite good. And then one last one over here. That opens up. This door can then open. Oh, if we don't have all kinds of things resting on it. And we're into the inner sanctum got bits of glass rope coming loose here and there. All that sort of shenanigans. Until it's been burning kind of up in the chamber up here where it's not really supposed to, it's supposed to burn down here only and then go sideways out there. Okay, we're gonna have to start with a bit of a clean by the looks of it. Uh, which is good because it gives me a chance to show you how to get the ash out. Just need to rescue this part of a different project. Primary air is coming in here. We've got a bit of a crack there now in that tube joint. Obviously, a ginormous hole there that seems to have burnt through comes up here, round here, shoots out of these little nozzles down this way into the burn chamber proper which is all super insulated, look at how much insulation there is there between the outside apart from where the glass door is so obviously things have changed quite a bit now, air is coming out of here 
and then the other primary air source is this tube over here which has changed a lot it actually used to be a tube that came all the way out to there and had nozzles firing sideways that way um, let me get the light to show you where that goes essentially it goes back through the stove to this intake here which I can block if I want to by putting a little just a little doodah in there. I've just set it up with a light so I'm blasting air into the heat exchanger and seeing how much trash comes down. Mainly it's just covering me. Oh, there we go, starting to get it. It just seems to be a certain angle needed on the compressed air gun to get it going a certain way. Excellent amount of dust going onto the camera phone here. Okay, it just got serious. So what I've decided to do, because I can't get inside this unit to see what's going on, secondary burn unit, primary burn down here, secondary combustion is happening in here somewhere, this insulated unit. I'm gonna cut this, take it out, then I'll be able to see down there and I'll be able to clean up around there. I'll be able to see on the, in the inside of this, see what's going on, both down here and up here. Don't know how we'll replace that, we'll see. Anyway, it's time grinding time. There somewhere. I should. Ah, uh, I'll make a mark first. A guide, if you will. A little trick for cutting around pipe. shenanigans I think I'm going to cut down here on the back and peel this off that is in remarkably good shape look at that so before I pull this off as it's being stubborn anyway check this out it's pretty good down there this piece off. I'm looking down there and seeing it's almost completely clear. Uh, you're not going to be able to see much of that, so you'll just have to take it from me. Perhaps our problem is up here. Deal, so we'll do some cleaning of that. now becomes how do we get this flue back in reasonably at the moment it's just sort of I've kind of pushed this in and it's meeting but not very well all round if you're wondering what I'm doing I'm just kind of bodging it together so I can test the airflow 
I don't know if you can hear that on there. Can't you hear it? I can hear it. It's the sound of air whistling through, which means the fan's now actually doing something and pulling some air through before that wasn't the case. And it's even with this giant hole in the flue, which is the current quandary. I found this thing that someone gave me a long time ago. There's problems going to be getting it on there. Good thing is, as long as it stays like this, pulling air, you know, I can feel it sucking air there. Small holes become less of a bother. Certainly not as pretty as it was. Right, so just before we light it and try it out, let's try and address that problem. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, honestly, I can't believe you let me carry on all this time with that mess all over the heat exchanger. I'll clear it up a bit, but I guess I'll have a chance to clear it up better when the new gasket arrives. It's a lot better for now that I'll have to do. But look at this, this is really interesting. I gave this a really light sand, and it showed up with this pattern. If you've got an idea what that is, leave us a comment. In the meantime, I think it's definitely time that we fired this baby up. So to start with, I just need packing in the kindling. Definitely an improvement over what we were getting. Now I'll build the rest of the fire up here. With that nice sideways burning flame, I can just stack the long logs that are selfie. So the rain started, which is annoying because you can't hear so well, but it's, take it from me, it's drawing really nicely. We shut the door. You can guess what that is. Old little hammerhead. Such a simple catch. We've been going about five minutes now. It's burnt its way back to the main burn chamber. But check this out. So hopefully you can see how that tube, because of the way the nozzle was faced, because it's been all burnt apart, it's kind of coming straight out towards the window not really the right direction before it kind of like had nozzles that shot to the left anyway it's certainly quite vigorous I'm gonna put a plug in that now I think because it's sort of sending the flames in the wrong I don't know I might leave it in it kind of sends the flames in the wrong direction but now they've started pulling pulling back and then with the window open okay guys if you stuck with all that you are lord of the fire geeks so thank you for joining me i uh, hope you found something interesting amongst that i feel like i only just skimmed the surface on the sort of benefits and drawbacks of this design it'll have to do for now subscribe and share and i'll see you next time